we're here at Air Venture and we've come over to the Behringer booth where we are looking at some of their handsome products and they've got lots more. We had to come by and find out what the new stuff. Speaking today with Claire from uh, Behringer, welcome to Oshkosh again. And uh, you've got at least three products that we would like to focus on for our light aircraft enthusiasts. I want to start off with your new four inch wheel that you just came out with. Yep. Please now with the rest okay. of this. So, um, yeah, this wheel is the lightest wheel in the world. Uh, it, it has the same technology than the other wheels. That means you have a tubeless wheel, uh, ball bearings, uh, a, single, a single piston brake, everything. And you're still using your neat floating disc, are you? Yeah, exactly the same technology. Which eliminates, as I recall, the kind of chatter that sometimes happens yeah. when you break an airplane and it kind of does yeah. that. Yours doesn't do that, is that right? <laughs> no, okay, great. <laughs> So, and this is aimed at, and I see on the sign here, it's aimed at aircraft from 330 to 770 pounds, it says. Uh, that's quite a light aircraft, including maybe the new German 120 kilogram class, yeah. or the American Part 103. Is that partly what this is aimed at? Yeah, this is aimed for, for this kind of aircraft and for UAVs too. Ah, UAVs as well. Yeah, so for basically single seaters and UAVs. Excellent. Well. That's a welcome thing because uh, many of the producers of those products have had to use non-aviation wheels and, yeah, and they don't always work out very well. Um, okay, well let's uh, shift gears a little bit and talk about your new one. We're seeing a great big tire down here and those are very popular with uh, Cubs and the Just Aircraft and some other marvelous aircraft that like to go in the bush and fly. Yeah. And you've got a new wheel for them as well. Yeah. Um we have this new wheel. Uh, we we used to make uh, uh, to cut the, the welded axle and then uh, bolt a new axle on it. But ah, it was kind of hard for the customers. Sure. So we decided to recreate an inner inner rim with a bigger ball bearing and then uh, make an adaptation part in aluminum. So you can just so they could just put their axle yeah, onto exactly. the, the one that they manufacture that will fit into this. And this is a this is a wide thing. This is one and a half inches. Is that correct? No. Uh, it's one quarter. One quarter, one and a quarter inches. Yeah. Okay. I know you like to work at metric, and someday we we may go to metric, but for now we use that silly inch thing. So, but I see two calipers on here. Yeah, it's actually optional. It's for uh, the tires because one uh, twenty six inches. Yeah, these these have a quite a bit of mass to them as well. They're substantial. And so then, so it comes with one. Is that correct? Yeah. And two is an option. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And uh, and what kind of aircraft besides the one I mentioned? Are there other aircraft? that may use this wheel, Claire? Uh, for the moment, this wheel is only for LSA. So okay. we will cover the contractors, just aircraft, and uh, maybe the bear hook. Okay, good. Now, I want to say, even though it's not our market, you also do wheels in the GA space. You're doing a wheel for Sears now. Yeah. So that was a great uh, achievement for you, I'm sure. They sell a lot of airplanes. Oh, yeah. So you do this fully uh, Part 23 certified world as well as the LSA product. Yeah, actually the parts, they, they, they are produced on the, on the same production line. And it's just at the end the paperwork is different. Sure. But the quality, the quality control, they are exactly the same. The quality of the product is the same. So if you have an LSA, it's the same quality as a Part 23 product. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Well, let's move to one more product that you've got now. I wrote about this earlier, and there's quite a bit of detail to it, and we'll skip all of the detail now, but I found this a very interesting idea. As the sign says, it's an anti-ground loop tail wheel, which, if you don't know what ground loop is, let me give a little background. When you're landing a tail wheel aircraft, and if you're not on the rudder pedals like you should be, the expression is happy feet, meaning keep them moving, keep it centered roughly. If you get a little too far one way or the other, the back end of the airplane can come around, and that that's not good. You don't want that. Uh, that can damage your plane. You've got a way to fix that problem. Tell us about it, Claire. Yeah, actually, we have developed this tail wheel that has a double pivot. That means that for... You've got two yeah. movement places here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for takeoff and landing, you have on, the, on this pivot. Let me move this a yeah. little bit so we can see that really well. So I see a line that goes right here. That's the uh, motion of the, uh, the pivoting arm, yeah. which is uh, connected up to the uh, uh, cable or whatever goes yeah. to the rudder. Yeah. Okay, continue. So in this case, the, the wheel axis in the, is in the same axle than the... Uh, I see, axis. there's a line here. Okay, uh -huh. okay, I got that. So here, for takeoff and landing at high speed, you just keep the perfect steering that you need to okay. correct the path. And then for um, U-turn or to get in a hangar, you just unlock it from this unlocking cable that goes uh -huh. in the cockpit. Okay, so the pilot has a knob that connects up to where your fingers are now. 
and pulls that on and then you can get a full swiveling motion. Exactly. So it must release out of this uh, piece right yeah. here, I'm guessing. So now you have a standard tail wheel with what we call a trail, that is the distance between this fiber and the wheel axis. Yeah, let's do that. Let's come back here like this. So you've got a line here and a line here, and that is called the trail right there. Is that yeah. correct? Okay, so when you're taking off or landing and you don't want that back end to come around so far, you keep it in the locked position. Yep. And then when it's ready to ground maneuver or something like that, or when you're just at the ramp and you want to turn around real quickly like a tail wheel can do, yeah. then you just pull this yeah. into a knob in the cockpit fit as it usually now that's what yeah, the, the airframe manufacturer will do that part, yeah right? they will figure out yeah okay great and the, 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 the difference compared to a, lock, a standard lockable tail wheel is that you still have the steering possibility ah okay and right with a lockable tail wheel you just yeah there is one that fixes it but that's just straight and well, I guess you have to use differential braking or something to turn it in. I'm not even sure how you do it, but great stuff. Well, there's lots more to learn. As, as you can look around their booth space here, there's a lot of neat hardware. Well, it looks beautiful, too. Are you, are you doing this all in house? I have to ask. Yeah. If you're own engineers, you do your own manufacturing. The machining and surface treatment, they all are subcontracted okay. uh, in France. Everything is made in France. Okay. Uh, and we do all the quality controls, the engineering, uh, and then the shipment to customers. Okay, and as long as you mention that, uh, you uh, you have a U.S. operation as well, right? For yeah. when your products come here, people don't have to call you in the middle of the night in France <laughs> and ask questions. You have someone here to... Yeah, we have actually a subsidiary that is called Behringer USA, ah, okay. and but it's located in Chicago. Okay, and well, very centrally located then. Yeah. They have all the spare parts available in 48 hours. And they have technical people there that can yeah. answer questions about how do I do this or that? Yeah. Okay, great stuff. Well, a lot of information, much more to see. Uh, wheels and brakes are their history and background. Where can we get more information? Uh, just give us your web address and we'll put it up on the screen. Yeah, you can look for uh, information on www.beringer-aero.com. Okay, excellent. And uh, that will get you to the U.S. address as well if you want to contact the U.S. Okay, very very good. So here we are at uh, Behringer at Oshkosh. There's a Behringer USA and the company is in France. And you also have a pretty nice little calendar people might want to check out yeah, too. Yeah, they are about to sign the calendar. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. So we better uh, let her go and let her sign some calendars. But that's great. Speaking with Claire from Behringer, I'm Dan Johnson. You can find more about Behringer and lots of other aircraft on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining us here at AirVenture. Merci beaucoup. Thank you.